Okay, so I'm going to present some recent results on pulse couple oscillator dynamics, synchronization, and uh, scheduling, which is inspired by the PCO um, dynamics. Um, and the problem that I'm trying to solve uh, is as follows. These are two metaphors. Uh, first, I want to have efficient conversations. So there is a bunch of people in a the room. They're trying to have in parallel several conversations without interruption. Or another possible situation, imagine you want to have your daily commute from home to work um, to be such that you'd never encounter a red light. So you, can, uh, you will never find anybody obstructing your uh, intersections. Um, so for these uh, two um, type of situations, which are metaphors for a wireless uh, network in uh, the first case and for a wired network in the second case, uh, what we need is, uh, first of all, to find a common time reference, and also uh, we need to find a schedule uh, within a cycle um, that determines uh, how our activities are uh, divided. So the daily cycle of our um, commutes, for example. Um, so uh, there are several ways of doing this. This is probably the most studied subject. Uh, it's not the, um, uh, the, the first, uh, certainly one of uh, the, the, the most interesting subjects in uh, wireless networks or wide networks, so scheduling and synchronization. Um, but the approach that I uh, followed and got me interested in network dynamics um, is to take inspiration for models in mathematical biology. And let me start from synchronization, which is uh, the theme, a really big theme in mathematical biology, and, as well as in network science in general. So a particularly uh, inspiring work in this, um, uh, this regard for these applications is the work that uh, Peskin introduced in 1975, the model that Peskin, Charles Peskin and NYU introduced in 1975. Uh, this was a model to capture how pacemaker cells synchronize. Uh, and unlike other dynamics, uh, these dynamics occurred uh, through uh, firing events, so uh, localized events that coupled uh, the dynamics uh, of the network. Um, so early on in 2003, I, I, I was interested in this protocol and I proposed that this protocol be applied for wireless networks, but obviously in the network science literature, um, there was uh, a lot of interest in establishing rigorous results about the convergence of this type of protocol. And there is a seminal paper uh, by Mirollo and Strogatz in the 1990s that proved that for a fully connected network, um, this protocol provides um, uh, synchronization. Um, there were also other later results by Lucarelli and Wang, Vernon Allen, and others uh, in 2004 and 2005 that try to generalize these results for non fully connected networks, but they, they make some assumptions that uh, um, are um, um, require some asymptotic regime that is not always uh, practical to achieve, while the evidence is that the protocol is extremely robust. Um, and can work in locally connected network. And this is still a subject that is uh, very interesting to many. I'm mentioning two much more recent uh, papers on the subject of uh, uh, synchronization in PCO, because there are some aspects that are not well understood. So let me, um, let me give a description of how this protocol uh, works and just briefly mention why is, uh, is that so appealing. So the protocol is very simple. It's based on uh, assuming that e each node keeps time according to a local clock. Um, here I'm normalizing time with the period of this local clock, which is this uh, capital T PCO. Uh, and uh, um, uh, because my clock is normalized, the clock evolves from zero up to the cycle, which is one. Um, and this is what the clock will do in isolation, extremely boring. It will just go from zero to one. Um, and uh, um, continue uh, this epoch undisturbed. But what makes it interesting is that these dynamics are coupled. Uh, and what we want to achieve through this coupling is essentially for all the nodes to mark, uh, to have exactly a, a synchronized phase. So they will uh, reach their point one, which we can imagine is uh, sort of like noon, uh, exactly at the same time. So this is the, the objective. So the way the PCO protocol achieves that is through a, uh, an update of the phase that occurs whenever um, a particular event happens. So as soon as each node reaches uh, a phase which is equal to one, so it's like an alarm clock, the clock is set off to, um, the node is set off to fire a signal 
which is overheard by the other nodes, uh, and uh, uh, each node that overhears uh, this firing signal um, uh, records whatever is the current phase uh, of its own clock at that particular time, which I call here TV. And so the use node will perform this particular update that I indicate below. So it will advance its clock by a certain percentage alpha. Alpha is a positive uh, uh, value. Uh, and so we go forward, uh, and obviously it, can, it will not go forward beyond uh, the end of the cycle. In that case, it will just definitely, uh, it will basically advance to the same point uh, of the node we just fired. Um, or it will do nothing. Uh, and the case in which we'll do nothing, you can see this condition on the left, is uh, if the node has uh, fired um, a certain amount of time rho, which is uh, a small amount of time after its own firing event. Um, and that is critical, the fact that the node does not react in that small amount of time uh, to create a situation where the node essentially settles. Now, in this idealized model, which is the model that was considering Miro and Strogat's work, um, every node, um, um, in essence, is led to fire um, uh, at unison. Uh, and one of the reasons uh, also is the fact that these firing events are instantaneously received uh, at every node. So now, obviously, this is not uh, a realistic assumption. Um, uh, first of all, there are propagation delays, uh, so the uh, signals are not received uh, instantaneously. And also, we want to assume that there is a certain uh, network which is locally connected. Um, I, I wish to remark that this is actually, for us, a non-directed network, so the network is undirected. And so, uh, we will use this notation where this EIJ, the coordinate vector that marks whether the IJ um, pair is one particular edge uh, in the network. Um, and uh, tau IJ is the normalized delay. Uh, so the assumption here is that the propagation delay is less uh, than the duration of the cycle. So our interest was to characterize the fixed point to have a sense of what happens uh, due to these propagation delays. What is the accuracy? that we can obtain uh, in a locally connected network in particular, um, the accuracy that we can obtain in synchronization, meaning what is the separation between the, the um, phase of the clocks asymptotically, uh, and uh, um, whether or not this, uh, this network will uh, achieve uh, some form of convergence. So what happens if we have a locally connected network and we have network delay? So in essence, the secret is to understand how the um, uh, update um, is uh, modified by these facts. Um, so at this point, instead of having uh, the, the firing time mark, uh, the moment at which each node updates um, its own uh, phase, um, each node has also a local time, uh, Rij, that depends on uh, not only the, the, the firing time Ti of a neighbor, uh, but also on the uh, delay that exists between uh, itself and the neighbor. Uh, furthermore, the update only occurs, obviously, uh, when uh, the node is, is uh, in the vicinity, in the same neighborhood, the firing node is in the same neighborhood of uh, the, the node uh, I mentioned before. And in this case, when there are propagation delays, it's particularly um, um, obvious why we need a refractory period, uh, precisely because these uh, uh, firing events uh, are not heard instantaneously. Uh, if uh, the node were uh, to update after the propagation delay, you will have a continuous echo effect where they will keep bouncing back and forth and uh, update their faces incessantly. So it's clear here that role plays an important role uh, in the convergence uh, of this algorithm. But interestingly, it doesn't play much of a role in terms of the accuracy. So the way we uh, analyze the performance, and this is the source of the main lemma that, allows, uh, that allowed us to characterize also the accuracy, is by stu studying the evolution of a, um, a, a auxiliary variable, a vector which has as many entries as the edges in the network. And the entries of this vector uh, are always the minimum um, difference between the phase of node i or node j or module one or the phase of node j uh, minus the phase of node i uh, module one. Essentially, this is the spacing, the minimum spacing between uh, two clocks. 
And the assumption for our dilemma is that the refractory period uh, has to be uh, uh, um, greater than twice the maximum delay, but also less than half of a cycle plus the minimum delay. And all the uh, uh, propagation delay have to be strictly less than one half. So under these assumptions, we, uh, we were able to prove that the only possible uh, uh, stable point, fixed point for for the PCO protocol uh, are um, uh, um, characterized by this vector delta of t um, uh, um, falling in this particular region. So very importantly, in this case, um, uh, you have an entire region, not necessarily only fix, uh, isolated fixed points uh, that are uh, possible um, um, uh, possible convergence points for the algorithm. Um, and this region is characterized by the fact that all the entries of this vector have to be between zero and the maximum delay. Um, not only that, but what happens is that in this region, uh, all of the, uh, 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 the fixed points uh, in general are uh, achieved with measure zero if uh, you consider a random initial phase uh, for the nodes, which is also continuous. But the only points that have mass of probability are when the delta ij are actually equal uh, to the, uh, the bound, their, uh, their uh, relative uh, uh, delay, uh, propagation delay of the nodes. Um, and, and this is very interesting because essentially this allows us to characterize uh, what is uh, not only a bound, but what we are, we are likely to encounter uh, as uh, uh, the final uh, fixed point for the algorithm. In particular, what we have is that you can have all possible combinations uh, of node orderings, uh, but in the end, there will be a node that sort of has a, a sequence of firing events. Uh, so this node it will be denoted by the index H. So he has phase VH, which is what marks the first firing event. Um, and all these firing events um, uh, will be separated uh, essentially by an accumulation of delays equal to the sum of the propagation delays over the path um, over the path that connects the first node uh, to uh, all the other nodes in the sequence. Uh, so the second node to fire will be an immediate neighbor. The third node to fire will be uh, um, uh, uh, pot potentially also in the neighborhood, but eventually all neighborhoods will be covered. Uh, and therefore, the maximum, uh, the maximum discrepancy will be characterized by, uh, by this ordering. And the worst ordering will set what is the maximum uh, inaccuracy that you can have in the timing. And the simulation results confirm this. Uh, so here we have an increasing number of nodes for very simple topologies. In the first case, you have a line network. And what we fixed is the total delay between the two furthest uh, nodes. And so we increase the density of nodes in the middle. Um, and so as you can see, uh, we in both cases uh, reach a sort of a middle point between the two extreme cases, which are the uh, red and green line. So I want to just briefly uh, say uh, how the scheduling works. So for the scheduling work, uh, there has been uh, also a lot of work in trying to adapt the PCO protocol. The Peskin model with the negative alpha leads to firing in a daisy chain, but that's not the most appropriate way of organizing a, a TDMA schedule in, in a wireless network. So the idea, once again, is to use this clock to keep uh, the state. And our main idea has been to utilize, um, in combination, uh, two clocks, one fine clock. You can imagine sort of the clock that marks the minutes that we want to align and synchronize, and a course clock, which is a multiple of the minutes, you can imagine it counts hours, where we, in, where we essentially um, count the minutes in an hour, where we essentially allocate a portion uh, of, uh, of this course clock cycle uh, for a certain transmission. So uh, how does this work? Once again, we need uh, also other clocks to mark uh, the, the schedule. And we have in particular these two clocks, the start and end clock, which are integer multiples of the PCO clock uh, that we have uh, above. So let's ignore for now the PCO clock. Let's assume that the period is asymptotically uh, zero. And so in the remainder, uh, we, we can assume that these um, 
instead of being integer variables, they are continuous variables. And the idea is, is very similar. Uh, whenever a start clock or an end clock uh, reaches its, uh, uh, its limit, its noon position, uh, then there is a firing event. Um, and these firing events are processed only by uh, nodes that are uh, um, supposed to fire immediately uh, after uh, and immediately before uh, another node. So the displacement in this case, uh, what it tries to do is to uh, um, make the start clock uh, come closer to the end clock of the system and uh, um, the end clock closer to the starting point of the other node. So this we call uh, an enhanced channel sensing with memory uh, uh, protocol. And let me just uh, jump and go directly to, uh, I'm running out of time, to the, uh, to the key results that were proven. So if you uh, update these dynamics on a fully connected network, uh, what you can do is achieve essentially a TDMS schedule or a proportional schedule, depending on how you set up uh, the parameters of this update uh, to more aggressively or less aggressively move uh, uh, closer to the uh, start and end clock of, of the neighbors. And the main result for uh, uh, locally connected networks is that in general all the, fair, the, the fixed points uh, uh, maintain a proportional fairness criterion, so you are given a proportion of the of the network which is uh, basically um, uh, controlled by this demand parameter. Uh, but there are situations in particular topology in which there is a unique fixed point where you actually get a proportional fair schedule that corresponds to the schedule that you will get in the most congested uh, subnetwork which is fully connected. Um, and in this case, you solve essentially a coloring problem. And this is an example. You have two clicks. Uh, these two purple nodes are in, uh, in these two clicks. Uh, and they get uh, the smallest schedule that corresponds to the most congested click, while the blue nodes get a, a larger share. And uh, here, all the, the, the spacing is used efficiently. And critical to achieve this is the fact of having uh, these two shared nodes uh, consecutively. So not all networks satisfy this condition, and not all ordering satisfy this condition, but under this condition, you essentially will solve a graph coloring problem. Uh, so in the uh, interest of time, um, since I am uh, running out of time, I believe, uh, I will uh, um, uh, leave it for questions. So these are uh, uh, simulation results. Uh, just a small uh, observation uh, is that um, we implemented actually this protocol through my microcontrollers, and we made a test with 39 nodes. And we uh, naturally uh, were able to, to, to show that for saturated traffic, uh, you actually achieve uh, much more efficient utilization of the medium compared to the state-of-the-art random access protocols that are myopic, so they don't keep state with comparable complexity. And that will conclude my talk.